Uh, hello and welcome everybody to today's Investor Q&A with Seb Langton from Vanable. Uh, my name is Tamin, I'm one of the campaign managers here at Birchill. So before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners from the land from which I'm beaming to you today. So Birchill is based on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and we pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, now I've had the pleasure of working with Seb and the Vanable team uh, preparing for their campaign and it's Safe to say I'm this close to being a full van life convert, um, as I'm sure most of you are too who are joining us today. So I know you're all much more interested in hearing from Seb, but a little note from Virtual first. Um, as the licensed intermediary for the offer, Virtual Financial Services is working with Vanable on their upcoming crowdsource funding offer. So crowdsource funding, or as you may know it, equity crowdfunding, is a relatively new form of fundraising in Australia that allows startups and small businesses to raise capital from a larger number, a large number of smaller investors um, or retail investors and wholesale or sophisticated investors as well through an online platform, which is virtual. So instead of seeking um, traditional sources of funding, such as banks or venture capitalist companies can turn to the general public, often their communities, which we know is very strong for Vanable, um, to raise money in exchange for their business. So the information that's discussed in this Q&A is for informational purposes only and should not be considered as, should not be considered as advice um, or a reason to invest. Um, please do your own research, always consider the CSF offer document um, and the risk warning before investing, but there's plenty more information over at virtual.com. So today's session um, is going to run with Seb kicking us off with a great presentation, approximately 15, 20 minutes, um, all about Vanable, where they've come from, what they're looking to do with their CSF raise, and then we'll switch over to the Q&A session where I know you've got all of your questions bubbling away. So if you look to the bottom of your Zoom screen, there should be a little Q&A bubble there. So if you have a question during today's session, pop that in there as we go along. Um, and then when we hit into the Q&A time, we can go over those. So the session is being recorded. If you have to jump off at any time, um, that's no worries. And without further ado, I'll hand over to you, Seb. Awesome. Thank you, Temin. And uh, thank you for the great introduction. And more importantly, um, thank you to everyone that has expressed interest in our campaign thus far. Uh, Freddie, I and the entire team are completely and utterly blown away by the level of support that we've received. Uh, obviously, some of you are customers, some of you are uh, friends, some of you are people that we've never even met. And it's a huge validation to us for what we've worked so hard for the last two, two and a half years to achieve. Um, so look, I'm going to take you through a little bit about the company uh, so that you get a good understanding of who we are and what we're trying to achieve. So Vanable is actually kind of split up into three different brands. We've got Vanable itself, which is a market leading van conversion company located in the heart of Sydney. Uh, over the last two and a half years, we've built a reputation as being one of the best builders, amassing over 65 star reviews. In order to do this, we need to stock a whole range of product. Uh, we've tried and tested over the years, and that's why we have another brand called Vansmart, which is a store that is dedicated to servicing the van life community with uh, tried and tested products that we've used and can vouch for. Uh, this opens up a, a sort of an additional revenue stream for the company. We have to stock it, so why not sell it anyway? And then lastly, we've got Vanaway, our new brand that we're launching, which is our rental fleet. Uh, this is providing the company with another revenue source uh, in, in form of rentals, but also enables us to showcase and provide potential clients with the opportunity to try before they buy or get instant gratification by just purchasing straight away. Um, so a bit of background on us as the founders. I'm obviously Seb Langton. I'm the managing director. I have a track record in sales, innovation and scaling businesses. Uh, I've been building since I was knee high to a grasshopper. I've been flipping houses, vans, sailing around the world on yachts and uh, have had an extremely successful career in sales prior to inventing the smallest remote GPS tracker in the world, which I grew into an international business selling to every major pet retailer globally. So 
I've got a bit of experience and know what I'm doing in, in moving in competitive spaces. My partner, Freddie, who also happens to be my fiance, uh, is kind of considered the design director of the business. She's got a proven flair for design detail and organization. And together we make a fantastic team. We're very privileged in the fact that we both live and work together and get on like a house on fire. And then, of course, there's Rocky Minocchi. Well, he's actually just a dog and he doesn't do anything at all, but he is great for morale, uh, which is really important for keeping the team motivated when things get tough. So uh, where are we located? Well, we were located in the heart of Sydney. Uh, we're in a very priv privileged position to have a manufacturing city, uh, manufacturing facility in the centre of the city at uh, a very affordable rate. Uh, the building's got over 2,000 square metres of workspace, which we occupy currently. It has 1,000 square metres of offices that we can expand into and over 500 square meters of parking. Now, this is really important. And as you can see from the photo there, we have the ability to enjoy an entire rooftop car park, but also have the protection of a covered car park, which is really important in the event of hailstorms, where we can protect the assets of our customers and ourselves. So where have we come from? You know, a little bit about the, the company. Let's talk about where we started. Uh, back in April 2021, I was asked to build the first vehicle by my partner. I was a super yacht captain stuck in COVID. And so I built our first vehicle on the street, which Freddie, my partner, posted online and ended up getting picked up by Current Affair. In June 2021, we went live on air and the inquiries off the back of that forced us to open our first facility in 20, uh, July 2021, which was about 400 square meters. And I can tell you now, I still remember making a call to my partner, panicked about the size of the facility, which seems kind of stupid now because of where we're at. But uh, within six months, we were forced to expand. Within the first year, we'd closed over a million in, in revenue. And as you can see, we were forced to then expand several more times. By the end of the second year in business, We've closed more than 2 million in revenue and the journey keeps going. We've featured on Shark Tank. We're now doing our virtual crowdfunding raise, which is why we're here today. And as of January, we've closed more than 500,000 in bookings in a month, which is a really good indication of where things are going. So how have we done this? Well, Vanable builds exceptional builds. And the reason why we do that is because we use the right materials in the right way to get the right result. As much as we love our customers, to be honest, I don't ever want to see any of them ever again. We want them to go off and have fun. So we build in such a way that we don't have warranty issues. Now, we still do have some, but it's very, very few because we use, as I said, the right materials in the right way to get the right result which has allowed us to, to garnish over 60 five-star reviews and enjoy the level of, of reputation that we have today. And on the back of that, as I said, we, we have to stock all this material, so why not sell it? Now, we've chosen to create a separate brand for our store so that we protect the brand of Vanable as a builder when we're doing 50, 60, 70, $80,000 jobs. We don't want a t-shirt sale or a sale of a hundred dollar tap tarnishing that reputation with a bad review if the, the product fails so we have a separate brand for our, our store which services the other let's say 95 97 percent of the market we may build for those that can afford it but there's still a huge portion of the market that wants to build themselves or can't afford to have somebody else do it and there's a huge gap in the market here for uh, a service offering which gives them tried and tested products and knowledge so that they can build safe and compliant vehicles. We're so deep in the industry, we're actually developing our own products as well, be it water tanks, plumbing systems, etc. From there, I want to just summarize by saying that we've validated the business, we've amassed a, a huge following on social media. We've got 68 five-star reviews as of today from our customers. We have consistency. We've been profitable for two years. 
And of course, we're demonstrating that we've got performance because we've doubled our revenue year on year. Moving on from there, I want to talk about what we're doing right now. So right now, we're developing the Vanable strategy. We're turning our designs and cut sheets into a low-touch, highly profitable, downloadable product so that people from around the world, whether it be van builders or self-builders, can take on board precise designs, material quantity lists, cut measurements and assembly diagrams, and recreate our designs themselves. This is really important because it allows us to scale beyond just being a local builder into international markets. The strategy for Vansmart is to use our reputation that we've garnished to attain distribution rights for a number of key products, being a welding toilet, hardware, products themselves, that we can then move from just being a retailer into a wholesaler to the industry as well. And then, of course, there's Vanaway, the rental fleet that we now want to create. So these are pre-built vehicles ready for rent or sale. They offer the best of what we are able to, to, to achieve in terms of quality and finishes. It offers compliant vehicles so that people know that they're safe. Again, it's a low touch uh, you know, revenue stream because we've already got the facility, we've already got the staff, being able to hand over people's vehicles and, and offer instant gratification is really important. So as you can see, the strategy is to build 12 plus vehicles over the next year or so. Uh, we're gonna be taking a 15% management fee on other people's vehicles, which we've already started doing. Uh, where we manage the handover and the uh, storage of the vehicle between rentals. Uh, we're offering zero wait time, i.e. if somebody comes along and, and just wants the product right there and then, it's available. And this is where we go next. Uh, we want to expand into multiple sites up and down the country, whether it be through franchising, potential partnerships, or just store openings. This will allow us to offer one-way trips up and down the coast, which is really important for the rental side of the market. Um, and as you can see, we're already building fleets for people offering bulk discounts for multiple builds or discounts for, for bulk builds. And we are also keen to explore something completely new. Uh, so this is where... We can demonstrate in the present that we have growth. We've got $580,000 that we've achieved in revenue since January 1st. We've got $800,000 of work on our build schedule. And we've got the potential of the Vansmart and Vanaway Van revenue streams, which we are just opening up. So now let's talk about the future. Uh, we've obviously proven the concept. We've achieved uh, a, a level of standing within the industry as Vanable. Uh, we've opened up Vansmart, which is going very well. We're offering the tried and tested products within the market. We've got phase three uh, ready to launch, which is a demo rental fleet with your help that we want to build. And again, this gives us additional revenue and also instant gratification for the customers. And then, of course, we want to move into phase four of the business, expansion. As you can appreciate, each of our brands has its own pathway for growth. Vanable is going to expand into a knowledge and content provider for products and designs. Uh, we'll still do our fantastic builds and still continue to develop those. But we see a, a much bigger opportunity there to help others uh, achieve something as well. Vansmart can expand to becoming a multi-site retailer within Australia and a wholesaler across the country. Uh, and Vanaway, we see expanding into multiple destinations up and down the country, offering one-way trips and evolving into what I believe will be the future of this industry. Now, obviously, the uh, ability for us to execute this does depend on the level of money we raise uh, and what we can actually achieve based on that, that quantity of funds. So this is where I'd like to talk a little bit about the future and what we've seen over the last couple of years uh, as a fundamental shift in, in the space. So we're not just building vans for travelers. Uh, we're actually kind of a tiny home specialist, right? We're, we're installing an entire home into a vehicle that sustains vibrations and uh, bouncing down the road and all the rest of it. 
And what we've seen is a, a shift away from building, uh, people wanting to build just vans to go on holiday to people actually building vans to escape the cost of living crisis and save money for a house deposit. And sort of recognizing that the first rung of the housing market is now unachievable. I think people are thirsting for an alternative stepping stone that they can use to amass a deposit and get into that housing market. And so we've seen a number of our clients building these vans to live in to save money from rent and amass a housing deposit and or flipping their way to a house deposit, which I find kind of interesting because that's what I did as a young man to start off. I flipped 11 houses at uni uh, to, to sort of get to where I wanted to be. And I see people using this as a stepping stone, which is quite interesting. But look, what I'm trying to say is what we are today is great, but what we could be tomorrow is a damn sight better. And with your help and your support, um, we are, you know, we're, we're going to get there. And I, I, I think we've got something special and I hope that you do too. Um, I've tried to reach out to everybody who's expressed interest personally to thank them. These are my contact details. We love communication. We love to be transparent about what we're doing as a business and what our plans are for the future. Um, you know, we're really excited about this and we hope that, you know, on, off the back of this Q&A, you are too. Awesome. Thank you so much for such a great presentation, Seb. That was awesome to get such a good insight into your business. Thank you. Um, now, we have had a few questions come through. So if you're still waning, fingers ready to type those questions through, pop them in now. Um, I would love to kick off the Q&A with a question of my own. Um, in terms of the, the custom builds that, that you've completed, has there ever been one that you really didn't want to let go of? More than one. Um, yeah, look, there, there's obviously in the course of being full custom, there's customers' designs that you really love and there's customers' yeah. designs that, you know, you're not so fond of. We're very open uh, when we, we talk to people about what they're trying to achieve. I'm pretty brutal when it comes to sort of saying my piece, whether I think they should have a shower inside or not. Um, yeah. And some people follow the advice, some people don't. Um, but look, at the end of the day, seeing what we create and seeing the look on people's faces when they drive off into the sunset with not a van, it's their van, right? And that's really important to us. We're not a cookie cutter builder. We're not a Jayco or an Apollo. They're all very good brands and they have their place in the market. But what we do is very different. We offer full custom builds so that people get what they really want. And I think the reason why we've been so successful is because there is this shift from just having a holiday vehicle to it actually being a home for people. And when you can offer them exactly what they want, whether you agree with it or not in terms of the design, it's yeah. really nice because they love it, right? It's, it's what they want. It suits their need, whether they have you know, a bike going in the back or surfboards going into it or, you know, whether they want a little mobile office or what have you. It doesn't really matter to us. We still love the process because we love building. Um, but, yeah, look, there definitely are some some standout builds that I go, yeah, that's awesome. Just as yeah. there's some standout customers. I mean, one of my favourite customers, just to segue a little bit, is a lady who was very unsure of the process and was a little nervous on her way through the whole thing because it is quite an exercise and she left uh, and she is so in love with her van she's like in her 70s traveling around the country having the time of her life sending us emails every now and again which i love seeing right these emails come through and you sort of click on them and open them up and there's a bunch of Aborigines dancing around and doing their thing. And we're just like, oh, my God, this woman is just traveling the country, seeing everything and experiencing everything that Australia has to offer. And that's what's so nice about it, because yeah. she, she wouldn't have that sitting in an apartment. And these photos and this experience that she's having is amazing. And she loves her van because it's what's allowing her to do that. Yeah, of course. I mean, and that sounds like a dream story, right? Um, and, you, you know, you were saying that it's, you have very few kind of warranty claims come through, but we had, we've had a question here that's, 
what percentage of builds do you have warranty claims on? Oh, that's a good question. And I don't know if I have the stat in my head in relation to that. Um, I would say it's very few. Um, we have a particular way of doing things within the company. So um, one of the things we stress to people is we build stationary vehicles, right? We're not there to take it for a joy ride. And one of my favorite lines to, to tell people when they come and see us is, look, when we do your build, when it's finished, we encourage you to go away, have a play and come back another day. Because as good as I am at knowing where to do things and what, what to put stuff and all the rest of it, you're going to go off and you're going to drive down the road and you're going to go, damn, like where can I hang my scarf? I've got no hooks yeah. on scarf. And that's the little tweaks that people want, right? Cool. You're going to need. And so, you know, that's where we have them come back after a little trial run and have those tweaks done. Um, but look, on the whole, warranty issues are a very, very small part of our business. They do happen. It's, you know, it's life. Products fail. Sometimes a little bit of our workmanship might fail because of the vibrations that these vehicles go through as they're being driven down the road. But we're here to fix them and we do every time. So then maybe the question is, how, how do you handle a warranty claim when it comes back? Like yeah, look, just just as a priority issue, you know, the, the, the customer, we encourage them to come in as quickly as possible. Uh, we get them into the workshop, whatever needs to be done. We, we just handle as quickly as and efficiently as possible to get them back out on the road. You know, our, our interest is in, in helping people get back to being out on the road because that's where we get our word of mouth. That's where we get our repeat business and our extended business when people are out there ranting and raving about how good Vanable is and how nice we are as people and what we do. And you can read that in our reviews, like, you know, we have helped an enormous amount of people through our time in the company. And that's really lovely to see as well. No, that's awesome. Thank you. So a couple of quick fire questions about the vans themselves. Do you have wheelchair accessible vans? Um, we have, I think we built a wheelchair accessible van in our past. We don't offer that as a, a particular service. It's a very specific um modification that needs to be done to the, the vehicle but once that modification is done we can dress the van post that modification but we don't actually build the wheelchair access if that's the the question that's being asked but we certainly can do the fit out after that that's been done great so then what is the most popular van um to convert like what what do people bring in yeah, look, uh, we, we get a bit of a mix of everything because we're full custom. We do everything from 1960s um, bus restorations all the way through to, to brand new Mercedes Sprinters. Uh, we get a lot of LDVs because LDVs are incredibly uh, affordable. And during COVID, they were one of the only vans that were sort of readily available. There's now very big wait lists for things like 4 by 4 Mercedes and Volkswagen. So, um Look, there's no particular van that we like doing better than others. They're all, as far as we're concerned, they're all empty metal shelves. The, yeah. the badge on the front only means something to the person who's buying the vehicle and driving, driving the vehicle because it ultimately comes down to what you can afford yeah. and what you like. I mean, no, so some... then more, what's your van of choice? Uh, look, I actually have owned an LDV to de deliver nine. Um, I drove it around for a couple of years and, and I thought it was fantastic. But I think my favourite vehicle that I've owned to date has got to be a Ford Transit Custom. I I love Fords. Um, I think they look fantastic. They're a low roof vehicle for my use case, which was weekend getaways at the time. It was perfect because I could still drive it around as a car. But it really does come down to um, the individual and what they're trying to achieve. Small vehicles are good for small trips. You might get away for uh, a week or a couple of weeks tops. Mid-sized vehicles are good for mid-sized trips. You'll get away for a month or two before it gets uncomfortable. Large vehicles so on and so forth. It, it sort of scales up from there. And if you want to go off forever, get a bus. <laughs> do what all the grey nomads do. They all just get buses and they've gone no, forever. You know? um, so obviously 
You, you mentioned in the presentation that you've had to expand like several times before. We've had a couple of questions about, um, you know, what the, do you own the, the place that where you store and like manufacture things? What are your lease terms if it's a lease? Can you explain a bit about that? Gee, if I owned it, I probably wouldn't be asking for any investment. <laughs> um, it's, look, it's a fantastic building. It's, uh, it was abandoned when we took it on. Um, we negotiated a very good lease on the building, um, but we've had to put up with, you know, a, a number of grievances, you know, leaks occasionally in the rain and stuff like that. But that's what you get when you're uh, a startup and you have to sort of hustle to get there. Um, but we ultimately, we we love the building. We love the facility. We love where we are. Um, but, you know, the expansion is is something we've just had to do because the business has just grown so quickly and so fast. We're in the building for the next year or so, uh, and we are expecting to have an extension option on it. But ultimately, the building will be knocked down in some time like they all do, and they end up being high rises. So someone will be living on top of what used to be Vanable at some stage. So then what's the plan from there? Oh, look, we'll move to another location. You know, it's it's not a big deal. Um, we've done it several times. You know, we're not a um, we're not an integrated facility. So, like, we don't have a heavy amount of infrastructure. Uh, you know, everything that we've got is very movable. Um, we just put it all in a truck and off we go. I mean, the last move we did, we did the actual entire move in one weekend. So wow. it's it's not a big disruption for the business. Yeah. Awesome. Um, a few questions here that's come through on Vanaway. If you could provide a little more clarity as to whether Vanaway is currently live, what the plan is, and um, we've had some questions about you know, how much you'll be renting the vans for, obviously all subject to change. Yeah. Um, but yeah, can you shine a bit of light on that? Yeah, look, we have started the Vanaway brand um, initially with offering a uh, management arrangement to our existing customers. We've got a multitude of customers who are uh, looking to operate their van as a business through renting it on Camplify. And uh, many of these customers don't have the opportunity or the space where they live to house these vehicles. Uh, having the facility that we have and the amount of parking that we have, it enables us to store the vehicles very easily, uh, we've got all the maintenance and all the ability to clean and facilitate the handover in-house. Uh, so that makes it very attractive for people. And of course, because we built the vehicle, we know the vehicle inside and out, which means handovers and dealing with the renters whilst they're out renting the vehicle with any questions that they may have is much easier for us uh, than, than the vehicle owner in a lot of cases. Um, we have also uh, dabbled in renting our own vehicles that we've built um, occasionally. That's gone very well, which is what's led us to go, How okay, we now need to, you know, invest into this, create a fleet and, and uh, you know, sort of enjoy that additional revenue. But the main purpose, I guess, for building this fleet is more so so that we have finished vehicles on site. Um you know, we have grown very quickly. We've we've built an incredible business with an incredible reputation. But unfortunately for us, we see this quite often. Customers will come and there's not actually a finished vehicle on site because, of course, as soon as it's finished, they want to pick it up and they want to go. Yeah. And then we've got nothing to show except a bunch of vehicles that are partway through the process of being built. Now, that's still cool. It's still nice for people to see because they're like, oh, okay, there's a couple there that are in the beginning stage and a couple that are near completion, but there's none that are actually finished, finished. Sometimes they're lucky and they come when the one's finished, but, you know, often it's not. Um, but it is nice to see them through the build process because we are very particular. I think the combination of the fact that I'm a super yacht captain and used to super yacht finishes and my partner being German, she's very particular about how things are done is a great combination because if it's not done right, it's not done at all. So even as you come and see the vehicles through the process, you'll notice that all the cuts are perfect. Even if it's not seen, it's done right. right? Yeah. Everything is just neat, it's tidy, it's well, well finished. All right. And do you have an idea of roughly how much you'd be renting the vans for, or would it kind of be dependent on which van? 
it will be dependent on um, which van because they're all different sizes. Um, but look, typically uh, vans are renting for about two hundred dollars a day plus. Um, I expect our vans to be in that two hundred to two fifty a day plus range um, because they are a premium compliant vehicle. Um, you know, we we get. A very good rep on, on the vehicles when people come back with them. And we had a question, do investors get a discount? Yeah, we have got uh, we have got some incentives, uh, everything from um, uh, free nights away in the, the rental vehicles all the way through to, uh, you know, 10% off the build for those who want to invest uh, to that level, um, which is really cool because then, you're not only a customer, you're an investor too. And that's always the best combination, I think, because you, you then, you know, you're loving what you do, you're invested into um, and you're a supporter out on the road. I mean, the more vans we finish, the more advertising we have. We, we, we've spent almost nothing on advertising today and we've managed to grow to this stage. I think, you know, one of the things that we're excited about doing next is continuing the level of exposure that we've we've ended up with through this virtual campaign because it is resulting in you know a, a magnitude of sales coming in which is obviously fantastic of course now i will just jump in here we've, we've had quite a few questions come through about um valuation share price minimum max targets when will i get a return on my investment so i'll handle these ones because the, the stage of um the campaign that we're in right now is the expression and interest phase so when the offer opens you'll um all have access to um, the offer document um, and the company constitution the subscription agreement all of the nitty-gritty details that outline um, this investment offer so those details aren't currently live yet so we won't be discussing them in the q a um but they will be live when the campaign, um, the offer, investment offer launches next Tuesday. Now, in terms of, um, you know, any exits or your return on investment, now this might be for some people your first investment through an equity crowdfunding platform. So I'd just like to um, kind of highlight what asset class this is. So when you buy shares in a company like Vanable through a platform like Virtual, you're buying fully owned ordinary shares in either a private or publicly unlisted Australian company. Um, and these shares are considered a liquid, so they cannot easily be shared, um, transferred or sold. However, there are numerous circumstances that um, may create an opportunity for shareholders to exit the business. So they include you know, a trade of the company, um, a listing on the stock exchange, a private equity investment in the business or a share buyback by the business. Um, so you will have to make um, your decision to invest based on the information provided in the offer document which will be next Tuesday, um, if you've expressed interest, because we'll be in the private um, phase. So uh, that's wrapping up that bit. Um, there have been a number of questions about like who your competitors are and I guess what your edge is over them. Can you go on a bit about that? Yeah, look, um, we've obviously entered into a competitive market space. Um, you know, we're, we're not first in, um, we won't be last in either. Uh, we came into this business during COVID, which had its challenges, but uh, it also had its benefits being that this industry in particular absolutely exploded during COVID and the lockdowns. Um, but I see it being sustained currently through this cost of living crisis and the shift towards people finding an alternative to, to housing and, and getting into the housing market. And I think that that piece is really exciting for me. Uh, our competitors are ranging from established businesses that have been around since sort of 1970s, uh, all the way through to, to brand new people coming into the fold. Um, most of these guys are sort of smaller operations. Um, you know, they seem content with doing 12 or so builds a year uh, and not really scaling the business. That's their choice. Uh, I see a much larger opportunity in, in going beyond just being a local van builder. Um, you know, we've always had this plan for the business from since the very beginning that we wanted to build locally, sell nationally and uh, sort of service the international markets, which is why we've built a reputation for being one of the best builders. We're selling the products that we use nationally and you know we're going to service the international markets with our designs and, and build kits um and you know there's there's other ideas and opportunities beyond that but that's that's you know sort of where we sit today um 
in Sydney alone, there's probably, I'd say, at least a dozen van builders um, ranging in size. Uh, arguably, I guess we're the largest and most reputable. We have certainly the most five-star reviews of any other van builder in the Sydney region uh, and and beyond. Um, and we just we work really hard at what we do. I mean, look, there's so many people on this call that will be business owners, right, and, and have experience with with business. And you, I don't have to tell you guys. You know, you you all know that in the early years, it's it's like eight, nine, ten days a week you're doing, right? You, you're just working your guts out to, to build something that you believe in. And Freddie and I absolutely build, believe in it. You know, we we love the business that we're in because we don't actually know whether we are a dream business because we're building a dream for ourselves or we're a business building dreams for others because that's what it really is to us. I mean, look, we're a young-ish. I'm, I'm a bit older, but... We're a youngish couple. I'm trying to get married to this girl because I love her to bits. And, uh, you know, we're, we're on a pathway where we just want to create a future for ourselves. But we also, at the same time, want to look after all these people that want to create a future for themselves too. And that's where the passion comes from in the business and, and why we've worked so hard to achieve what we have. And I guess that shows in our reviews and shows in our growth and, and is validated by you know, the love that the, the customers that we have, have for us. Fabulous answer. Thank you. Um, and I mean, you, you've grown this amazing business within the market, as you said, with very little, um, you know, financial input into that. What is your marketing strategy over the next, say, 12 months? Yeah, um, it has been a, a, an amazing business to have been built uh, over a very short period of time with, with you know, some input, but not a huge amount of input uh, to, to get to where we are. We're very privileged because we own everything we've got. We don't have any debts to suppliers for stock or anything like that. All our equipment's owned ourselves. And I think, you know, one of the things people always say to us is, oh, you know, what happened to all the, the, the sort of profits and the, the profits have just been reabsorbed back into the business because we've tried to grow the business. In terms of marketing, we've we've been very fortunate through COVID to survive to this point with very little marketing. I think we've spent less than 1% of our revenue on marketing exercises over our entire, uh, you know, entire history, entire life. Um, but look, I see us uh, with... Uh, certainly putting towards a, a better budget for uh, social and digital marketing. Uh, I think there is uh, obviously an opportunity to work with um, dealerships at the source of the product. You know, people are buying the vans from the dealers. It makes sense to, to try and work with them to showcase our products there and or work with them in some sort of um, referral capacity so that people are, are coming to a reputable known builder and getting a yeah. known result. And I think that's really important to distinguish. Vanable has got to the stage where it is a known entity with a known result. It's not like going to a, you know, a small van builder with, with sort of unknown results. Um, that's what people are paying for. That's what they enjoy. And I think, um, you know, we also have some opportunities in terms of TV exposure coming up and, uh, you know, various other activities that we would like to do, uh, one of which being, you know, the, the the rental fleet, because the more bands out there, the more exposure we have, the more people come to us. So kind of a mixture of partnerships and then yeah. social, digital and traditional media. Yeah, referral programs, all that sort of stuff. I mean, look, it, it's across the board, right? I mean, we're at that stage now where we start having to to go, OK, well, you know, Vansmart uh, obviously has a different strategy to Vanable, which has a different strategy to Vanaway. Um, and, you know, we've, we've got a bit of a plan for each of those businesses, but they are slightly different. They all complement each other. Um, the strategy all complements each other in terms of the growth and the marketing plan uh, complements each other in terms of what we're doing. Um, but they all have their own pathways. I mean, Vansmart being product based is, is probably better suited to, you know, Google shop shopping and, and Google AdWords and things like that, you know, um, 
Vanable being a very visual uh, product is, is very well suited in the social media spaces. You know, people love seeing uh, new designs. Um, and Vanaway is really just about getting out to the international traveling market, tourism. And j just for um, clarity for those on um, the Q&A right now. So by investing in Vanable, you, are you investing from, from the top or is it just in one of the um, individual brands? No, it's the whole kit and caboodle. Like you get everything. Um, you know, I'm not in this to, to, you know, make it difficult for people. Let's just make it easy. Look, you get the whole whole lot. Um, you know, you get access to all of these different things, all of the different uh, products that we're coming up with, all of the different innovations that we're continuing to to, to evolve into. Um, and that's an important thing to, to stress, right? Uh, we're not a stagnant company, and I don't think we ever will be. Uh, you know, we like to evolve, and you have to evolve as a company. If you don't evolve, you don't survive. And so what we are today may not be what we are tomorrow. The, the key thing is we're a fantastic team that's delivered fantastic results and we will continue to deliver fantastic results because we're going to continue to grow as a team. We're going to continue to bring in more skills, more people, more resources, and that's going to allow us to, to grow faster and into different areas. And some of those none of us even know about right now, but they will become known to us through time and we'll be able to explore that. Um, and uh, I guess we'll see that in our designs at, at Vanable. You know, we, we haven't just stuck with one design all the way through. Uh, and we could have, right? It's, it's more efficient to do that. But uh, like the business, the designs have to evolve also because things change, trends change, fashion changes, people's tastes change throughout time. You know, you don't have houses dressed up the same way they were in the 1950s to how they're dressed up today. And that's one of the reasons why I'm not so worried about the IP in terms of being lost in the build kits and the build designs, because our IP is protected in our ability to keep moving forward, not in just trying to scrabble around with the scraps of the past. It's in it's in recreating different ways of doing things and recreating different designs that are popular at that time. And that's why we can let go of some of our previous designs and say, look, these are available to the wider market for people who want to build them. So speaking of that, of those plans, are they, um, like, do you have a patent on them? Is there? There's no registered patent on them. Uh, designs are uh, covered by copyright. Um, inherently in Australia. Um, but, you know, as I said, we're not worried about necessarily protecting those because they move on, right? I mean, what, what was popular yesterday in van life is not popular today. And that still allows people to build vanable designs that are still popular and still interesting, but they're not as popular as the stuff that we're going to be going into. You know, the, the materials change. The designs change. The way that people are using the vehicle is changing. As I mentioned, you know, it's less about building holiday vehicles now. And it's more about building homes. You know, the definition of motor home is changed. It is actually a home now. It's not. It's not just a holiday vehicle. It's. It's actually real life for people. And for these builds, how much kind of is, is the average build? And we have another question here is, you know, would Vanable consider finance, um, partnering with a finance organisation to offer customers financing for fit outs? So um, the average build cost, yeah. So, so let's start with the first. The average build cost has increased over time as our, uh, as our materials and the, what we do with the vehicles has changed over time. Uh, I think the average build cost now is probably in the region of about 60,000. We have a very unique pricing structure, which is built around the cubic volume of the vehicle. I like being really efficient with quotes because it allows me the time to concentrate on what I think is really important, which is the build and the quality of the finish and the result. I don't want to waste my time with the quote. And so we've adopted the same kind of uh, strategy that the building industry has. You know, when you go and get a house built, they don't sit there going, oh, well, there's three doors and five windows and, you know, 728 bricks on this wall. And, you know, it's too time consuming. 
So we've adopted a cubic meter pricing system that allows us to quote based on the volume of the vehicle. The bigger the volume, the bigger the things that people want in it, the more stuff that they want in it. Uh, and so that is allowing us to quote really fast and, and move the business along really, really quickly. And it's changing our average price point all the time. We've gone from sort of, I think in the early stages, we were about 4,000 a cubic meter. It's now up to about 6,000 a cubic meter. Um, you know, in the early stages, we were sinking in an opportunity cost. You know, you're building to prove what you could do. Now we've yeah. proved what we could do. But we're a very affordable price within the market. If you compare us to other van builders, we're certainly not the most expensive. Uh, but I feel we offer the best value for money in terms of the quality of finishes that we do, and which can't always be seen in photos. Like you have to come and see us to to experience it. And and a few of the expression of interest people have popped by, which is awesome because I get to tour them around the facility and show them exactly what's going on and the level of finish that we achieve. Like that carpentry can't really be captured easily in, in photos. Um, but to answer the second question. Uh, would we uh, get involved with a finance company? We do have, uh, I guess, partners in the space who are able to offer finance on both the build and the vehicle. In fact, we've become so established now that even some dealerships will lend against the vehicle and the build itself. Uh, and we've certainly experienced that uh, so far. Um, when it comes to these sort of partnerships uh, or or, or business relationships we only want to uh be focused on what we're focused on right i mean with, with those things we're happy to give referrals based on the fact that it's the right thing to do we're not interested in making money through that transaction um if we believe in the company and what they're uh, offering as a service we'll offer it to our customer as a service because it's just the right thing to do. And, and that's really nice because we've got a number of people that are sort of supporting our business with things like that, the financing, where we can happily offer that referral and stay out of the situation, knowing that that's between them yeah. and the customer. And then we can just focus on what we do best. Of course. So uh, as you continue to grow the business, um, Two, two questions on this. Do you have enough staff currently to keep up with demand? Um, and do you have a, a solid system in place to help you manage sales, purchases, inventory? Yeah, look, two of the biggest challenges through creating this business and growing this fast, especially through COVID, have been staff and resources. Uh, as many people can appreciate, you know, during COVID, building industry was absorbing a lot of the skilled labour at stupid rates of of pay um and you know it was just a, a demand situation you had to to rise to the table now we've managed to overcome that um we we've, we've built a team that are very very good do we have enough staff today to to, to meet the demand no um is the simple answer uh, hence the reason why we're raising we can keep up with the the level of work we've got but i want more work like, why, why would I slow down? There is a massive opportunity here. I think we can provide a really good solution for people. I think we provide excellent value for money. And I want to see us grow as a company. I want to see the staff grow. I want to see the opportunity grow. I want to see multiple sites. I want to see us become a brand synonymous with van life, not just here in Australia, but potentially even globally as well. Uh, because I think we deserve it. You know, I think if you work really hard at what you do, the success and the, the monetary reward comes as a, a product of working really hard for what you love doing, right? And that's, that's I think, the, the key thing for us. We actually love what we do. And everything else is just, you know, a product of what we do. Of course. No, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, now, we have a few more questions that have come through about... Um, the, the vans themselves. The very particular one here, do you have to get sign off for compliance for gas stoves, electrics, whatnot? Yeah, look, this is one of my, uh, I guess, one of the biggest reasons why I want to be not just a van builder, but also help other people build. Uh, the, the most upsetting thing for me is not um, people wanting to build themselves or people not building with us. 
the 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 biggest thing for me uh that that absolutely pulls on my heartstrings is when somebody turns up to our facility and i have to tell them the truth your vehicle's overweight there's no electrical compliance this is an illegal vehicle like it can't be registered it's not roadworthy because it's beyond its gvm uh or in the worst case scenarios, like we had one lady, she she opened up her van door and started crying because what she had ended up with was so horrendously bad, built by another supposed professional van builder. It just, it ruins you. I don't really care if we build it or not. I, I want to help people get to, to achieving a dream. Like it is a dream for people and it is a lot of money, right? It's not cheap to do these things. There's um, all the materials, there's all the labor. You are building a house. You know, you've got plumbing, you've got insulation, you've got electrics, you've got gas. In a lot of those situations, you do have to have compliance. And when people self-build without knowing the rules, they can go very wrong very, very quickly, which is why I think there is a major gap in the market for somebody like us to come in and really help people. And that's why we've got these brands. You know, Van Vanable is there for those that can afford. And we do fantastic work that's fully compliant. Uh, you know, we have electrical certification. We have uh, people come in who can do the gas certification. We've got an independent engineer who comes in to do the engineering certification. But then we also want to be able to provide that assistance to the self-builders as well. So they can come to a place like Vansmart by the right materials, that aren't going to endanger them and get the job done right in the right way so that they can end up with a compliant vehicle. Because it is a dangerous game. Like people forget if you end up with a vehicle that cannot be registered and you're driving around on the roads with it unknowingly and you have an accident because the vehicle's overweight and it can't stop in time, it's serious. Just as if you build with the wrong materials and you end up with black mold forming behind the walls, it will kill you. Once it gets on your lungs, it can't come off. So it is really, really important that you do it right or you don't play, right? You can't do the wrong thing. So then with these build kits that, that you're, you know, creating and um, making public for people, what kind of support or assistance does Vanable offer to like a home builder while they're doing it? Yeah, so look, if, if they're local enough and fortunate enough to be able to come to our facility or hopefully in the future one of our facilities let's let's say that um you know obviously we're there to give them all the advice they need to get it right and to ensure that they're building correctly when it comes to uh, the installation of electrics 12 volt installations don't need certification they're low voltage installations but they still have to be done correctly and that's what the hits are there to to provide assistance on because it's a big area of confusion and then 240 installations do need to be done by a qualified and certified uh, electrician. And this is what we want to stress within these build kits is, is really making the rules of this game very clear for people to understand about what they should be doing themselves, what they shouldn't be doing themselves, where they should be getting assistance in the build and where they can happily play away all day and, and try and get the result they want but it's not just the electrical installations gas installations that are key in this game it's also partly the design there are things about the design that aren't considered legal in australia but like for example having flap ups that block the entryways uh you know that's a restriction of the ability to get in and out of the vehicle if there's a fire uh that can make the vehicle uncompliant so it, you know we want this this uh, documentation to be backed up by the expertise that we have, by the expertise of our partners within the industry, you know, people like our independent engineer who will be able to offer that support and, and get people the right result. Right. So, so they can contact you directly, whether it's, you know, through a video call, whether it's through coming in to see you in person. 100%. We'll also be creating a whole range of YouTube videos about uh, how to build what materials to use, what techniques to use to get the right results. We're currently in process of putting that all together at the moment. We are also building out a book of how to build and what to build with. Um, one of the things that we do best is we do buy in a lot of different products. We test all of them. We work out whether you know it's good, bad or ugly. 
and uh, we keep the best in breed of everything. It's not always the most expensive. It's the thing that's right for the job, the thing that's going to give you the least amount of hassle, the least amount of stress. As we've seen with our builds, we certainly don't use the most expensive electrical system on the market as an example, but we've had no hassles with it in two and a half years. It's been wonderful to work with and it's right for the job. I often say to people like buying brands like Victron and Red Arc, they're fantastic brands. I can't knock them, but it's like taking a Ferrari to Bunnings. It's complete overkill. Like, you know, you get your two by four in it. It's just, it's unnecessary. It's the highest spending you need and, you know, do what's right for the job. Yeah. Yeah. Victron's great for Makes super dogs. Red Ox great for four by four people who want to go through a lake. <laughs> So, you know, imagine yourself in, in one year's time. Obviously, things change, positions change, but like, what, what do you want to be celebrating in terms of a measure of success? Like, what goals do you have? Gee, one year further down the track, a few more wrinkles, a few more white hairs in the beard. Um, in terms of success, I would love to see, uh, like we did in our two year birthday party. We had a fantastic rooftop party where we celebrated with as many of the customers as we could. And we gave away an entire van build for free to a particular customer. Um, and it's a life changing giveaway. It was so nice to, to uh, enjoy that evening with people who had been bumbling around in our vehicles for a year or two and to share it with the staff as well who've worked so incredibly hard to create these worlds for people, right? I would love to see something like that happen again, but on an even bigger scale. I mean, we're opening this up to a lot of investors and how cool would it be to have all of them there on the rooftop celebrating a way that we've doubled our revenue again, that we've, you know, got even more five-star reviews, that we've got a whole rental fleet downstairs that we can show off, that we're thinking about moving into our second site or down the country, that we're campaigning with the government to, to do things around city camps and, you know, affordable housing like there's so much opportunity in this business and it continues to surprise me every day with what tomorrow brings. It's just nice. It's just nice. But the best part is the customers. The best part is seeing what it means to them. Like, we, you know, I know so many of them by name and I know so many of them because they regularly come back. They regularly support the business. They regularly talk about how much they love their vehicle and what it means to them, right? Because it is it is changing their life. Yeah. I think we might wrap up there. That was a really nice note to finish on. Um, thank, you. thank you so much, um, Seb, for such a great presentation. And thank you to everyone for joining today. Um, there's some amazing questions that came through. And there are still a number of questions that we didn't get to. There's about 10 left. So, Seb, I'll make sure I'll send them to you afterwards so you can get back to people. Um, yeah. As I mentioned earlier, recording of this video will be sent around to everyone who registered in case anybody missed out. Feel free to share that if you think any of your friends might be interested as well. So the Expression of Interest campaign um, for Vanable is open for the rest of this week. Um, so if you haven't already, jump onto their virtual profile, check out the pitch video and the company profile. So the early access investment offer will open on Tuesday next week. Um, so make sure you get your expression in, of interest in before then um, if you want to have access to the offer document or the key terms of the offer before it goes live to the public. Um, thank you again so much, Seb. Um, have a lovely thank rest you. of your day. Thank you. Cheers, See you guys. Bye. Bye.